Tuesday at Merced turned into a sweep for one driver, plus we had a champion crowned and a DQ. We'll talk about all of that, plus we got the Shepard Longhorn photo. Let's go. It's Wednesday, November 23rd. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. Before we get into things uh, today, this is probably my last show of the week. Figured I'd take a few days off with the holiday here. If something gets crazy, though, something crazy happens, we could definitely fit in an episode somewhere if need be. Also, because we're coming up on Black Friday and Cyber Monday, I've gone ahead and just put the entire merch store on sale. Uh, every hat shirt decal has been discounted. Uh, that includes the new hats as well. And I'll keep the prices where they are through next Monday, that Cyber Monday, uh, if you want to go, go ahead and grab something. And I'll still cover shipping and taxes if you live in the U.S. Uh, head over to shop.dirttracker.com to take advantage of the savings. I'm not traveling anywhere for Thanksgiving, so if you make an order, I'll have them packed and shipped pretty quickly. Uh, last night at Merced Speedway in California, we got the first of two nights of racing uh, with the USAC Midgets and local 360 sprint cars. Once pre uh, preliminary action on the night was completed, all Buddy Kofoid had to do was fire off for the feature, which he did, uh, and he claimed the USAC National Midget Championship for the second straight season. According to Wikipedia, Kofoid becomes the 12th different driver to win USAC Midget titles back-to-back, -back, with the last one being Brian Clausen in 2010 and 2011. No surprise to see Kofoid wrap it up with still a couple of race nights left. He's been absolutely lights out in the midget this season. He's won 12 of the 30 races. That's 40% of the shows. He's finished in the top five in all but four races and in the top 10 in all but two. His average finish for the year right now is an insane 3.7. I don't have stats that go back super far, but I'm guessing this has to be one of the best USAC midget seasons ever for a driver. In the night's midget feature, Jake Andriotti, Chance Crum, and Justin Grant led early, but Carson Macedo was on a charge, and he went fifth to the lead in 10 laps. From there, he was never really challenged again, including on a late restart. The win for Macedo was his first ever with the USAC National Midgets. If you go back over the last week, you can tell Macedo kind of just needed some time to acclimate to the car after a long season in the sprint car. He was 16th in a B on the first night back in a midget at Bakersfield. He was then 22nd, 10th, and then 4th at Placerville through the Hangtown 100, and now he's a winner. With the way his improvement has gone here over the last week, he may win the next two nights as well. Behind Macedo, Kofoid hard charge from 14th to finish 2nd, with Justin Grant rounding out the official podium. I say official because Jake Andriotti was actually 3rd at the checkered flag, but his night went sideways in post-race tech. All USAC said in the post-race release was that he was DQ'd for failing inspection, but we know this morning that it was because of his engine. Brian Axup and the Esslinger Twitter account posted after the DQ that the engine mapping was set 200 RPMs too high at 10,000 instead of 9,800, and that's why Andriotti failed. Axup took responsibility for the mistake, explaining that the mapping was not set correctly after the team needed to change engines at Placerville. Their plan today is to have USAC check everything before they roll onto the track to just avoid any sort of issues. In the night sprint car show, Macedo made it a sweep after starting third and getting around Tanner Carrick for the lead before halfway. Uh, Macedo was in the Tarleton 21. He used lap traffic to sneak by the 83T, and then he held off a final lap challenge from Chase Randall to bag the win. The attempt from Randall actually cost him second as well, with Tyler Courtney sneaking by to finish runner-up with Randall back to third. Sunshine was driving the Works Limited 57. We did have some fireworks in the sprint car feature when Kobe Copeland and Justin Sanders tangled with both drivers ending up out of the race. Sanders actually tried to come at Copeland. Uh, I don't know if there was going to be a physical altercation or if he just wanted to yell at him, but track officials held him back from doing so. The two had traded moves and some contact right before the incident happened, and we're not really quite sure what happened with the crash as Flow Racing's replay just kind of showed the tail end of the incident. Uh, if you're in the area today, Merced, uh, loca uh, located east of San Jose and uh, north of Fresno on Highway 99, they'll line them up and do it all over again tonight. If you can't get there, you can watch it live over on Flow Racing. Don't forget the USAC Midget season ends on Saturday at Ventura for Turkey Night. Uh, we talked yesterday on the show about Brandon Shepard taking a rocket chassis to the Dome next week for the Gateway Dirt Nationals. And I mentioned there was supposedly a photo floating around of the uh, B5 pit cart in the, one of the buildings at Longhorn Chassis. I had not seen the photo, but thanks to a few in my audience who I will not name, uh, I am now in possession of said photo, and here it is. Uh, this was apparently first posted to Snapchat, and it shows very clearly the Shepard B5 pit cart inside a building. 
next to a car on stands with a blue nose. Uh, the photo is tagged at Viva Motorsports in China, uh, China Grove, North Carolina. Uh, that is a little complex located in the low complex where Longhorn chassis sits on North Carolina Highway 152. Whether or not this is actual evidence uh, of a swap to Longhorns, I'll let you decide, but this photo isn't quite a smoking gun. First, it's not dated, so we have no idea when it was actually taken. The chatter says this photo was after Shepard was at Sonoya last weekend, but again, nothing to actually confirm that from the photo. Also, outside of the tag on the photo that says Viva Motorsports, uh, that could technically be photoshopped on, uh, and nothing in the photo uh, is visible that says Longhorn or anything like that, so we can't really confirm that this is indeed the Longhorn shop. I'm sure if you've been inside that shop, uh, you would recognize it, uh, but nothing in the photo specifically says that this is Longhorn chassis. Uh, so keep that in mind when you're looking at this photo. Uh, B5 pit cart, yes. Blue nose, yes. Chassis in the background, yes. Uh, in a building, for sure. Kaiser manufacturing box visible, yes. Uh, from there, everything else I think is kind of up for debate. Uh, so we'll let you decide on whether or not this is actually evidence of Brandon Shepard <laughs> being in a Longhorn chassis next season. One other late model note for you today, Big Frog Motorsports uh, has announced that reigning Super Dirt Car Series champion Matt Shepard will drive their number 58 at the upcoming XR Super Series events at Alltech Raceway in Florida. The Sunshine State 50 takes place December 2nd and 3rd. And according to the release from the team, they are also working on having Shepard in the car during speed weeks in January and February next year between Georgia and Florida. Shepard said the last time he thinks he was in a late model was at Brewerton with the World of Outlaws way back in 2009. So definitely been a while since Shepard was in a late model. He's obviously a talented racer and a modified, so it'll be fun to see what he can do with the late model crowd. Looking elsewhere over the next few days, there are a few other dirt racing events going on. The Gobbler 100 at Cochrane Motor Speedway features 10,000 win for crate racing USA late models. The Ironman series closes out its year on Sunday at 411 Motor Speedway. They're racing for 5,000 to win. Springfield Raceway in Missouri has 10,000 to win for late models on Sunday. There are also a few events uh, down under playing on Clay per view, including two nights for the Pro Dirt Series. So in between uh, Turkey and football, there is definitely some dirt racing to check out over the next couple of days. If you're in the market for other dirt racing podcasts this week, Loud Pedal has Brent Cox from Abacus Racing. Passing Points has another Down Under episode. Forward Bite has Boom Briggs. Uh, dirt Tracks and Rib Racks has Travis Berryhill. And there are new episodes of The Dirt Reporters and The Dirt Nerds. To, uh, to see the full list of shows and episodes, head over to dirttracker.com slash podcasts. And today's streaming schedule is exactly the same as it was yesterday. Action from Merced and Flow 24-7 over on Flow Racing plus Dirt Vision Now. If you want to see the full daily streaming schedule through the weekend with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. That's it for the show today. Enjoy the Thanksgiving holiday weekend. Uh, please hit that like button and subscribe to the show if you don't do so already. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in this week. We'll be back next Monday for more Dirt Tracker Daily.